Today I have five beautiful spring thrift flips. Keep watching! I'm Brandy. This is Making It My Own DIYs and I'm in Alabama. This is a thrift flip road trip with my good friends Teresa at Al Green Acres and crafting cousins Trish and Kay. Playlist link and the link to the hostess channels will be in the description box below. Now for project number one. I found this gorgeous little window like frame at Goodwill. Unfortunately, they won't let me record in Goodwill because it's the Goodwill bins. So we're not allowed to do that for privacy reasons. So I'm just gonna get right on into what we're making today. I've been redoing some of the decor in my bedroom to make it more of a cottagey look. And I thought this would be perfect on a display wall. And I'm gonna start off with some chalk paint. You can use whatever paint you have. I'm using a chippy brush and I'm just kind of slathering this on here. I don't want full coverage. I want this to be rustic because no matter how much my style changes, I just don't think you can knock the rustic out of me. So I'm going to keep putting this on here and I'm just showing you how I apply it. I'm just dragging it back and forth. I'm letting it be lighter in some areas. If you feel like when you do this that your coverage is just a little bit too heavy, do not be concerned about that because I'm going to show you how to fix it. We're going to chip it up in just a bit and make it our own. Now be sure that when you're doing this, you get around the corners and I want to get right inside of this frame as well. All those little inside corners and nooks and crannies need to be covered in the white. Now I'm going to take a very rough grit sandpaper and just start making notches and splintered looks and just grooves all into the paint. It just makes it look old and rustic. You can see how I'm doing it. I'm just dragging it back and forth on that paint and it's just pulling bits and pieces of the paint off. Any of the areas where the bars cross, the corners, things like that, go ahead and work on those spots. Any area that would normally get a lot of wear, you want to be sure that you are really working on those pieces. Just like on this. You could use a hand sander if you needed to, if you wanted to. But just be very careful because they have a tendency to take a lot more off than we intend. See how I'm getting around the corners? You can get an idea here of how it looks. Now I want to put a hook on top because I decided that I wanted to hang a wreath on it. So I'm just taking this little hook, which later on I do paint gray. I'm just going to try to make a little pilot hole in there. I'm just going to get a little hole started and then just like that and right in the center. And then I'm just going to twist this down in here until it is flush. And there you go. So here is our frame before and here is our frame after. Project number two. I'm going to use this blessed sign that I found and this wreath that is underneath. This is a grapevine wreath. I'm showing you the measurements here so you'll know if you want to use something that's comparable to it. I love how round this wreath was. A lot of times when I find them, they're kind of oval shaped or stretched out, but this one was really nice. All right, so this is going to be super rustic and super easy, really fast to do. I'm just going to take some of my jute cord here and I'm going to go around like the corner area of the frame and then pull it behind the wreath and tie it off. This is an easy step to do if you can just not be like me, fumble fingers over here. Tie it in a double knot, tie it in a triple knot, add a little hot glue if you want so everything stays in place. But we want this jute to show. So this is going to be an important part of the wreath because it's going to hold it in place and it's going to have a design function because it's going to give us a very pretty rustic or cottagey look as well. I think sometimes cottage and rustic kind of blend over into each other. What do you think? I know that seems to be more of my style and I think that they look really good together. So I'm going to just kind of wrap this around to the back and I've decided that rather than putting it in the corner of the lower part, I'm going to put it in the top part. You can see what I mean. It's above the corner there. I made sure that when I did this that I started off by hanging it first to make sure that I had a nice straight line and that my wreath was exactly where it wanted to be. And then I went ahead and tied both sides down. 
And there's a hanger already on this wreath right here in the center. And that's kind of what I used to go by to make sure that I had everything lined up the way that I wanted it to be. You can certainly use any type of artwork that you find, any type of an open frame and layer it on top of a wreath. And it's a very pretty um, textural look because there's not gonna be a lot going on in this wreath as far as I'm not putting a bow on it. I won't be putting any flowers on it. I just want the wood, the vine, and then the metal texture to show in this. And you can see I have it pretty much centered here. So the next part is super easy. You're just gonna do the same thing in this corner and the same thing in the other corner. And there you go. That's how that one looks. It's ready to hang before and after. Y'all have got to check out Al Green Acres, Sweet Teresa. She does all kinds of shabby chic and thrift flips. You're really gonna love her. And check out my friends Kay and Trish over at Crafting Cousins. They have been a huge support system in the community and I just love those girls so much. Project number three. I'm gonna use this magazine rack. I love the bones of it. I love this texture on the side, these little panels. We're gonna plug these off, so don't worry about it. They did come from the thrift store without any plugs, but I happen to have found at a different time some wood plugs. How about that? You never know what you might find in the thrift store. I've hammered those in. We're not worried about the little dented areas because we're gonna fix it. I'm gonna take my matte Mod Podge and then give it two good coats outside once it is completely dry. I'm gonna bring it in and start laying on the paint. Now this is a dark, dark wine colored paint. And even with chalk paint, which is pretty thick, it took some work. You can see here that you can still see through it but you're gonna keep going. We're gonna persevere. We're gonna keep pushing on. Cover everything, bottom, top, sides, legs, the spindles, handle. And then three coats later, here's that beautiful rack. Totally and perfectly cottage and gonna look beautiful in my room. Wait till the end of the video when you see how I've styled it. All of these turned out really cute. I love this. I hope that you can find a magazine rack. I usually find them when I'm there. So this is before and the after. Follow me on my social media, y'all. All right, project number four. I'm gonna take this cute little bonnet, this little straw hat. I've been trying to collect these to hang on my wall. This one had some damage though. It was missing its band. But that's all right, because if you know me, you knew I was probably gonna take it off anyway. I'm just gonna use some of this thinner linen and cotton blend ribbon. I got mine from burlapfabric.com. And you can find those links below if you're looking for any, uh, you know, just for your own preference. Do whatever you want. You can use Dollar Tree decorative ribbon. You can use Easter ribbon. You can use jute cord here. You could use rope or nautical rope. But I just love this cream colored neutral linen ribbon. So I'm gonna use it to create a new hat band. Now, the hat top is tapered, so your ribbon is not going to lay completely flat. Do not let that bother you because I'm gonna show you how to fix it. So once it is down, I'm gonna take a ribbon that came off of another project that I did. I'll leave the link to that video in the description box below so that you can make it if you like it. I'm just gonna repurpose this and I'm gonna put it right on this hat. It is the perfect little cute addition to this hat. Isn't that very Pollyanna? Oh, just love it. Okay, so here's what you do. You're gonna go up to the top where you don't have your glue. You're gonna snip it, take a little bit of hot glue, and then overlap that little snip. That's gonna make a little pleat or a little, little area where your ribbon is gonna overlap slightly. It won't be noticed, and it's gonna give you a better fit against the top of that hat or the crown of the hat, whatever you want to call it. And you can just continue around your hat and do this wherever you feel like you need to do it. I'm not gonna sweat it. I'm not gonna do too much here. All right. So here we are with the before and the after of our hat. Project number five. This one is probably not completely what your idea of a thrift flip would be. 
but it is for me and I'll show you why. So here is this beautiful picture. It is in a green color. I traded somebody some books for this uh, at Goodwill and that was fun because I really wanted it and she wanted the books. I'm gonna take two picks of thrifted greenery and this beautiful fall pick. I think these are our peonies. Are these peonies? I think they are. Um, I'm going to cut these off. Do not be alarmed by the clashing of the colors because I realize there are fall leaves on here and it is a very pretty Eastery green on that picture. We're gonna fix that and I'm gonna show you how. So just continue to cut these down. Clip, clip, clip until everything is off. I'm leaving those stems a little bit long because I'll be using these in another project, I'm sure. So all you have to do is pull off the greenery from these leaves. They slide right off the stem. And then what you're left with is a beautiful, creamy, peachy flower, which is perfect really for any time of year. Very easy. Some of the picks on here have cream colored flowers, which we're gonna use. And some of the picks that were on here had like a green color and we won't be needing those. So I'll put those aside for my fall projects. So anything that looks like fall, I'm peeling off. And this is what we have left. Aren't they pretty? Love these. So what you need to do with thrifted flowers is be sure that they're clean. Get the dust off of them. You can use a lint roller to clean them up. You can actually wash some of them in the sink with a little warm water and hang them upside down to dry. These were clean, so what I'm doing now is just using my hands to reform the petals, closing it up, making it look beautiful. And there was a little bit of uh, like some glue on there and I got the glue off just to make them look beautiful because we want it to look high end. We, we don't necessarily need everybody to know that what we have in our home is a thrift flip, right? We don't have to tell them all of our secrets. So we're gonna start off by taking, I think this is uh, maybe some boxwood. I got two of these and I was very happy. I am separating them so they're not squished anymore. A lot of times your greenery is mashed together. Just pull those apart. They don't grow mashed together in nature, so let's just fix it. And then once you get it in there how you like it, I'm satisfied with that. You can go ahead and start adding your florals. If you like something simple, you could leave it like that. All right, I'm gonna start with a big flower in the center, a flower on the outside, a flower on the other outside, and so on and so on. I'm gonna have the playlist videos in the description box below, so be sure that you go check out everybody else's videos. And hey, in the comments, why don't you let me know where you're from? I would love to know. Come along with us and get inspired and maybe learn a few new things. We can save the planet one video at a time. That's right. We're gonna repurpose things. That's good. Get in your, in your craft stash. You know, maybe you don't have a good thrift store or what you would call a good thrift store. Get into your craft stash. Go and find some things that you already had. Maybe you've got a wreath that you don't wanna use anymore. Pull it apart. You can make a, another arrangement out of it. Okay, so now I'm gonna use some of these Dollar Tree um, clovers that I had left over from some other projects. And it just shows you how easy it would be to turn this into something for maybe St. Patrick's Day if you wanted to. It's pretty much all green, right? Just put some of those picks in there and you'll be good to go. Now I added these in here and I didn't feel too bad about it because if, even though they weren't thrifted, I thought it was important to give you another idea. We want you to open your minds and think about ways that you can repurpose. And since I've already used this in another project, I'm using them again in this one. I'm just continuing around and making it look where uh, the way that I like for it to look. And then I remembered I had two of these beautiful peachy orange flowers left, these daisies. And I wanted to add those in here as well. And they really give it a nice pop without just jumping out at you. So I've just kind of Put those across from each other if you look at it you know from the top so this is what we have and it looks so springy to me doesn't it it would be beautiful for easter as well so here's that picture in the greenery before and here it is after here is the overview of all the projects that we did and i believe in you and i think you can make some of these they were very fast projects i got all this squeezed into one video what do you think and guess what? Another surprise is every single thing that you see in this video is thrifted, except for the little clovers we put in that planter. 
My lights underneath are thrifted. The burlap runner is thrifted. My backdrop is, flip, is thrifted. All of the projects are thrifted. The bunny, the spindles, the burlap wrap there, the, sh the shawl or the scarf, all of my little, little eggs and the planner and everything. Everything was thrifted. How about that? Don't you think this is gorgeous? I do Dollar Tree DIYs and thrift flips all the time. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you know when I do all of my new content. This collaboration is full of crafty, excited people who want to show you what they're capable of, who want to show you what they can do with items that maybe have been donated, discarded, put in garage sales, maybe they're hand-me-downs. You're gonna get so much inspiration from this that I just know you're gonna wanna come back for more. I'm gonna have links in the description box for that playlist and for the hostesses, Crafting Cousins and Teresa over at Our Green Acres. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.